Welcome to the third video of the series, where we're going to have a look at some of the features Microsoft have included to make operating the ATR on a simulator platform a little bit more user friendly. The EFB tablet located on the left hand side of the captain's seat has several tabs to help us set up the aircraft for flight, with menus for payload, performance, aircraft, maintenance and options selectable along the top of the screen. The loading of the ATR is actually done via the in-sim weight and balance user interface. By default, the aircraft loads in with 50% fuel and 80% payload, giving us a takeoff weight of just over 22.1 tonne. The chart on the payload screen of the EFB depicts the ATR's weight and centre of gravity limits, with the small pink circle showing where they currently lie depending on the user preset payload. Below the chart are live figures for empty weight, payload weight, fuel weight and gross weight, centre of gravity and takeoff trim. Some of these will not populate until the MCDU has been powered on. On the MCDU weight page, a long mouse press on the left hand soft keys adjacent to the weight fields will copy the UI set weights into the FMS. You can also click set to wind the elevator trim to the correct takeoff value on the EFB. On the right hand side of the chart are a list of V speeds. You can tap on info for a list of definitions of each acronym. On the performance page, the sim will automatically generate your V1, VR and V2 speeds. In the real world, these are determined by a calculation based on the aircraft's weight, the runway and environmental conditions. Before takeoff, the speed auto button needs to be pushed to populate these V speeds onto the PFD's airspeed indicator. Landing data is also shown on the EFB once you have a flight plan with a destination airport and runway loaded into the FMS. The aircraft screen allows you to select items such as ground power, wheel chocks, as well as open and close the aircraft doors. A few save state presets are selectable on the right hand side. You can choose between a cold and dark cockpit, turnaround, ready for startup, which has hotel mode running already, and ready for taxi, which has both engines running. The maintenance tab allows you to reset systems like engine fire bottles, oxygen supply, and brake temperatures. The options tab will allow you to customise the units of measurement the aircraft avionics suite uses. These can also be changed in the FMS units page. The PFD throttle hint is a handy inclusion that puts a little alert in the top left hand corner of the PFD screen to show the throttle's position, so that you don't have to keep panning your camera view to the central pedestal during taxi, takeoff or landing. The throttle setup window allows users to adjust and set their hardware lever range from idle to the notch, and set a tolerance range for each detent. If we have a look at the layout of the central pedestal, you'll see there are several different input panels both in front and behind the throttle stack. In the real aircraft, your hand falls naturally to these buttons and it's easy to move your gaze between the input panels and the display screens. It's not so easy in the sim however, so Microsoft have created a mouse click overlay on both the MFD and EWD screens for us. The virtual control panel with the COM, NAV, SERV menus have been made into a touch screen. If you want to change a frequency, just click on one of the boxes in question, then type the frequency in on the panel below the MCDU, like so. To cycle through the ND map formats, click on either the left or right hand side of the screen to see north up, arc or compass rows. You can zoom out the scale by clicking on the top of the map area, and you can zoom in the map scale by clicking on the bottom of the map area. In the centre of the MFD screen are four click spots to change between ND, Systems, Performance and Map. The control panel for the EWD is located back behind the throttle quadrant and has an up key, down key, validate key, recall and clear keys. These keys have been overlaid on the lower half of the screen with up, down and validate on the left hand side. Over the central part of the window are four boxes for the procedure menu, manual delete, recall and clear. These take a bit of getting used to, but repetition helps once you know where to point your mouse. That's all for episode 3. In the next video, we'll take you through a flight deck setup step by step following ATR FCOM procedures.